Hello, my name is Chris Rosenbush. I am a nursing education specialist at the Rochester Mayo Multidisciplinary Simulation Center, and I am here today to show you how to build a low fidelity cesarean section model. This model uh, was originally built for emergency medicine residents to use in a perimortem C-section case. To begin, you need to get your supplies. I used a 15 inch rubber ball, balloons, a baby doll with a placenta. You'll need some duoderm or a product similar to this. Two-sided tape, duct tape, millipore tape, and a scalpel and then some material that looks flesh colored. You know, uh, all of these items were bought at a discount store, so you could even use something like a tablecloth or a shower curtain that has that flesh color to it. So I purchased two yards of this material and cut it into four pieces. I was able to do uh, four models with the amount of supplies that I bought, and the supplies were no more than $16 total. So to begin with, You'll cut your material, like I said, into four pieces, and then you need to line the back of your material with duct tape. This indicates and represents the inside of the abdominal wall. Once you have that done, you're going to cut your piece of material to fit your mannequin. Now, I used a hazmat mannequin for this model, and so I was able to cut down my material to a smaller piece, making it easier to work with. Once we actually fit the model on the mannequin, you'll trim that material up and then adhere it with the tape. Next, you wanna take your ball and you're going to cover this ball. The ball is the uterus with duct tape. Covering the ball with the duct tape helps prevent it from tearing once you cut into it to place the baby inside and the water balloons inside. So get it all covered. This one has been covered with the duct tape and then you're going to leave a small section open here and that's where you'll place your duoderm and again that's just another piece on the outside of that uterus that gives the learner a more realistic feeling as they cut through the model to simulate that actual cesarean section that they would do performing on a patient all right so this one has been taped the duoderm is on and at the back i made a small incision over the duct tape. So this is the part where the duoderm is that goes up towards the learner as the top of the uterus that they will be cutting through, performing the C-section through. And in the back, this is where we will put the water balloons first. Your water balloons indicate the amniotic fluid and you want those in first so when the learner cuts through the ball and cuts through the duoderm, they'll hit the water balloons and the amniotic fluid will break open just like it would in real life. So the water balloons in first, and then you're going to take your baby. When I did this originally, I used baby Natalie and the placenta that came with that. For this one, I purchased the baby at the discount store, um, used some red tape to indicate the umbilical cord with just a barely filled balloon at the end. Just something that resembles the placenta and umbilical cord. So you're going to place the baby in next. Once you get the baby in, you can seal the back section, make it nice and snug in there, make sure the water balloons are in place first, make this nice and snug, and then you'll want to put a piece of duct tape over that just to secure that. Once you have your model ready, you're ready to place it on the mannequin and secure the outside material indicating the skin on the outside of the abdomen. All right, let's place this on the mannequin. So now we're over by the patient, the mannequin. What you'll want to do is take your two-sided tape and put a square on the mannequin's abdomen here, and that will just help secure the material once we are ready for that. You can see that I have my model here. I'm going to take a couple pieces of duct tape and just secure that a little bit more. Once that's on, you can place your material over top. And then you're going to take your millipore tape. And this is where you will secure this. So 
So now that you have it secured at the bottom, you're going to take your material and really see where you need to place it. And this is where you want to trim the excess of the material off. So I always start small. You can always do more. And then at the top, same thing. You'll want to tuck that in, make it nice and tight using your double-sided tape again to secure the material. And then you can trim your excess. Once you have that on there and you're nice and secure, we did just a black dot to indicate the umbilicus. Okay, model's in place, your umbilicus is uh, drawn on, you can throw the gown over the patient and you're ready to start your scenario. The C-section model was developed for a perimortem scenario requiring emergency medicine residents to deliver a baby via C-section. The learners participated in a scenario in which a 37-week pregnant female came into the emergency department with shortness of breath, which progressively worsened into PEA. We actually used two mannequins. We had the hazmat mannequin with the low fidelity C-section model on it on one gurney. And then next to that, in the next bed space, we had the SimMan 3G model in it that the learners were actually performing the resuscitative efforts on. Um, once the mannequin went pulseless, the patient went pulseless, then the confederate in the room uncovered the low fidelity model for the learner to perform the C-section on. Uh, the learner cut into the pregnant abdomen with a scalpel, hitting the water balloon, signifying the leaking amniotic fluid. And then once that incision was made, the learner reached in, delivered the baby and the placenta, and uh, the scenario ended. So now we're going to show you an actual clip of the scenario using the C-section model. Thank you for your attention today. We're in. Thank you. LB, remember what to do? Which, which, which way to approach? I think you do, you do uh, um, a longitudinal... Vertical yeah. incision, yes. And All the way through. We don't care about the bladder, so... Um, just I don't cut be, the baby. I won't cut the baby. Just leave <laughs> the you. uterus, too. You can, absolutely. So. It's all Okay. So go with that. I purposely shut this off. Go with that monitor. Okay, okay. Is there a uh, more about... 45 seconds in, so I'll yep. switch out at two minutes. We're doing epinephrine right now. I'll try to keep her alive basically to refuse the baby. Ella is going to prepare for a perimortem C section. Excellent compressions. <laughs> Shauna, do you have other ideas? Or Al? No. No. Okay. Does Ella agree? Suspected okay, yeah. PE, causing so PE or S. Do you have any other thoughts? She's got ideas that. She's got her up All right. Can, um, can we hook up PEA my suction, please? Needs drugs. Yeah, oh, I'll do it. Got it. And our tube is still placed right. So, right. Dr. Walter, fast and furious, cut yeah. wide open. There we go. Grab baby, clamp, clamp, warmer. Ooh, I, need some, I need some clamps. Where's the rest of my kit? <laughs> I'm helping out all of your kids. Oh, grab your, grab, That's your, all? grab okay. your shoelaces. I heard you can do that if you don't have clowns. This is a small rural hospital. Use your resources. Are there no stools? Yeah, so I all right. I we, can, we can switch okay. if you want. Yeah. So we'll do two minutes. We'll check a pulse. Less than 10 seconds. Do we have a pulse? Uh, Andy? No. I hope not. Because <laughs> okay. He's not <laughs> kicking. So I'll, I'll start two oh, feet. for the water, but we'll make you. Are there any other tools, like some sort of kit? What okay. tools are you? Um, I I would like I would like some clamps. Bladder retraction. Possibly. Uh, yeah, but maybe yeah. Okay, I'm getting up. I'm I'm doing really somebody's coming. Okay. Suc suction for the baby's mouth and it comes out right away. I've got suction for the baby. Okay. Oh, there's my baby. <coughs> Oh All right, goodness. so blood pressure is up a little bit. We'll try to keep it uh, as maps above 50s to perfuse the placenta and baby. All right. Oh, what is it? Okay. It's, a, it's a girl. Suction, suction out of her little mouth here. All right. <laughs> That's right. That's the worst All right, of it. what are our app guys? Is she crying? Um, 
clamp, 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 clamp. Okay, cut. Okay. Okay, we are clamped and clamped and snipped. All right, I'm gonna okay. pull out the placenta. Okay. All right, that was. We're <laughs> nice. gonna go to the NICU. So okay. Okay. Three minutes since our last dose of epi. Okay, let's pull up one more milligram. Right. I'm we'll gonna check two pack, minutes. We'll check a pulse. Pack the blood. The any pulse? Uterus here. Oh, that was the one. Do we have a pulse? No pulse. I don't see uh, intermittent rhythm, so still in PEA arrest. It's been five minutes. All right, we're giving a second dose of epi. Okay. A milligram in. Don't did, worry, did I've got the PEA come up. Uh, I'd still push TPA. Here. No, no it's TPA. It's, it's still hard. Uh, any other thoughts on managing uh, PEA arrest? I know I know we all suspect. Did we get an ICEP? Oh, that's one of our labs for you. Put in. What are the results though? Yeah, that's one of the results. Okay. Well, uh, despite thinking or suspecting this is a large PEA, we still think about other things. So we'll get our ISTAT back, check the K, check the glucose. Um, other peaches and teas, acidosis.